Good morning. So today we come to the end of our current message series, and we've been talking all this month about what we're thinking and what it takes to change our thinking, to try and get on God's wavelength. God wants us to think as he thinks, so we can filter our thoughts through the prism of what St. Paul taught us. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is gracious, whatever is, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, to think about these things. The goal is to grow to be friends and followers of Jesus Christ. And so today we jump into our gospel reading and we hear that when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him and asked him, Teacher, which in the law is the greatest commandment? This is the moment from the final week of Jesus' life. It was Holy Week. And much of that week saw him in conflict with the religious leaders of his time. They were jealous and afraid. So by this point, they're conspiring together to trip Jesus up and to get rid of him forever. But they underestimated Jesus. After they had taken every shot at him, they can think of that there they've got one more opportunity. And this is the ultimate gotcha question. What is the greatest commandment? Testing Jesus with the hope that this question will stump him and somehow his whole ministry will come tumbling down. Life and society in Israel were based upon the law, the law of Moses. And they had identified 613 specific commandments in the law. These laws were endlessly debated and discussed and defined and redefined by the religious professionals. Some said that all the laws were equal and must be applied equally. Others, that there was a hierarchy to the laws, that some of them were more important and some less so. But to ask this question suggested a vast simplification that no one had ever considered before. Perhaps because there was simply no answer to such a question until this moment in history. And Jesus responded, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. That's it. The whole law. All the laws depend on the most important law. And the idea of putting these two laws together was unthinkable. Not only did he do that, he tells them that all the other laws hang upon these two. In fact, they're all about those two. You shall love the Lord your God. You shall love your neighbor. The law is about living more successfully as God would have us live. And the only way to even begin to approach it, much less live it, is through the exercise of love of God that is given in expression in the love of neighbor. Everything that God has done in history and everything that he has said in scripture come down to these two twin commandments, being the greatest command to love God and love our neighbor. 
To love God and to love another person ultimately means something quite specific. And it starts in your mind. Basically, we're talking about emotional health. That's what God wants for us. Jesus is describing the path to emotional health. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. So how do we do that? To begin, give God your attention in daily quiet time, in prayer, in daily scripture readings, and here at the Eucharist. Attention leads to affection. As we get to know the person who is Jesus Christ, we're learning to love him and ultimately leads to the care and service of one another. Accepting others, welcoming others, encouraging others, serving others, forgiving others. Following Jesus comes down to loving God and loving people. In the deepest part of our hearts, we know this to be true. That's what's in our hearts. And to fulfill it and make it whole, it's got to begin in our head. Here's the bottom line of this message. What will be the bottom line for this series? God does not think like us. But when we think as God thinks, we do as God says.